Hi, my name is Samuel Bagat, and I am giving my presentation on my paper's research topic, The Influence of Doo-Wop, Jazz, Jazz Fusion, R&B, and Progressive Rock on Frank Zappa's use of the saxophone sound. Now, the sound of the saxophone was a huge influence on, and staple use uh, of, of Zappa throughout his entire career. From whenever he was a child through sounds that he heard as he was, you know, before, during, and after the, mother, the mothers of invention. The sound of the saxophone was impressed upon him, obviously, like I said, throughout his career. He, uh, he goes on record uh, from a 69 interview um, towards the end of the original Mothers of Invention group. Um, he remarks upon uh, the saxophone player of the band Coliseum, saying, And I dug Coliseum, particularly Dick, the guy who plays tenor and soprano. Does he do sessions in London? He ought to. He's really a bitch. So clearly, Sa Zappa, he listened for the saxophone sound, and he really liked the way it sounded because obviously he's, he's referencing a small instance in when he heard uh, the saxophone solo by uh, this band. So he definitely heard it, and he definitely considered it as an important sound in his, uh, in his ear. So... Throughout this presentation, we'll talk about albums such as Absolutely Free Hot Rats, so The Grand Wazoo, One Size Fits All, Zappa in New York, The Best Band You've Never Heard Of In Your Life, uh, all of the You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore volumes except for one, um, and uh, Waka Jawaka uh, will all be analyzed and talked about during this presentation, uh, analyzing Frank Zappa's use of his influences of doo-wop, jazz, jazz fusion, R&B, and progressive rock. The use of the saxophone, an instrument found in almost all of Zappa's works, as well as genres that influence Zappa, was a common archetype used by Zappa in conveying these influences before and around him in his works. These influences on and by Zappa include the musical genres expressed by the saxophone in genres such as R&B and doo-wop, to semi-new genres at the time that developed in the 1940s and reached the height of popularity around the late 1950s and early 1960s. It's during these this 20 years that Zappa grew up in and absorbed uh, this new musical culture and genres from his time. Uh, both R&B and doo-wop music stem from jazz and blues, music from earlier in the century. Blues guitarists like Guitar Slim um, and Howlin' Wolf Here's a Colin Wolf, uh, oh, Muddy Waters, yeah. uh, Johnny Guitar Watson were a few musicians that stemmed from this era that created big band, jazz, and blues bands in the 30s and 40s that Zappa references has, as having influenced him, um, as he does in the interview in 1969 for Kaleidoscope. Doo-wop and R&B influences on Zappa's use of the saxophone. From an interview in 1968 Rolling Stone, uh, Zappa goes on record saying, Then I heard some R&B and wanted to be in an R&B band. I tried to get some money to get a band together. At that time, the guitar wasn't the solo instrument. It was the saxophone. The height of R&B and doo-wop era, the 1950s and 1960s, was the time that Zappa grew up. Zappa references Hank Ballard in the Midnighters track, Work With Me Any, as one of his first encounters with doo-wop as a, as a young boy. The presence of these genres of music, as well as their jazz origin, would play a massive role in influencing Zappa's use of the saxophone sound. Zappa's experience with the saxophone sound began in San Diego when bands in the local area, cool bands, as he puts it, had to have at least three saxophones, one of which had to be a baritone, this distinction shows Zappa being aware of its importance in, in this doo-wop sound that is influencing him. Although he would probably not, li not have liked the culture of doo-wop um, later in his career, uh, he definitely enjoys the sound of doo-wop because he goes on to write um, doo-wop sounds uh, with the saxophone in albums like Absolutely Free, Lumpy Gravy, We're Only In It For The Money, and Cruising With Reuben and The Jets. Zappa's two saxophonists at the time were uh, John Leon Bunk Gardner and Ian Underwood. 
Uh, Bunk Gordon Gardner uh, was uh, born about seven years before Zappa and Ian Underwood a little more than a year before. So they both grew up in the same time as Frank Zappa. Um, Gardner's influences uh, include uh, Mozart, Bartok, Stravinsky. He also listened to jazz uh, like Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, Stan Kenton, uh, Woody Herman, Dizzy Gillespie, and Charlie Parker as he lists them out in his autobiography. Ian Underwood graduated from Yale University with a bachelor's degree in composition in 1961 and a master's degree in composition at UC Berkeley in 1966 with interest in Stockhausen, Blues, Stravinsky as well. Whenever he joined on, he was a perfect addition to Mother's Dimension. Same interests as John Liam Bunk, Gar Bunk Gardner and Frank Zappa at the time. Neither of these artists had, had, uh, had recorded uh, doo-wop before Frank Zappa but they were definitely they were definitely aware of music because of the era they grew up in. And um, in Frank Zappa's fifth release uh, with the Mothers of Invention, "Cruising with Reuben and the Jets," um, which is a full homage to the doo wop era, uh, especially and R and B influences, um, he uh, he has Bunk Gardner uh, on a doo wop inspired solo on the song uh, "Anything" at a. Uh, a minute 34. So clearly a very laid back, uh, behind the melody sort type of uh, use of the saxophone, very commonly used that way in doo-wop music. So in an interview in 1970 with Evergreen, Frank Zappa goes on record saying, So a statement that appeared in some newspaper article about pop music, saying how great it is that we finally have gotten away from the pure olive slush of the 50s, was probably made by someone who never heard of that decade's great R&B numbers. You probably only heard stuff on easy access labels like Liberty, Dot, and maybe Capital. And even if you were into R&B at the time, there was still another strata, one beneath the accessible R&B records. If you knew and liked R&B, then you knew Little Willie John and Hank Ballard on the King label. Little Willie John and Hank Ballard frequently used saxophones in their lineups. Um, they both employed um, saxophonists, uh, when playing certain genres like doo-wop and R&B, uh, and so clearly their sound was an influence on Zappa. For the album Hot Rats, which, which was uh, heavily jazz, jazz fusion, and R&B influenced, uh, he, uh, Zappa utilizes uh, multi-instrumentalist Ian Underwood uh, at 2 minutes and 39 seconds in uh, Son of Mr. Green Jeans, uh, playing a uh, very and overdubbed alto saxophone, and I think a tenor as well. So clearly an R&B, very R&B influenced solo uh, there. And then there is another instance of him. He's actually playing, he's playing bass clarinet, but I believe it's dubbed over to sound like a tenor saxophone. This is from um, a, live, a live recording uh, on uh, Frank Zappa's Cosmic Debris, Ian Underwood playing bass clarinet that sounds like a tenor sax. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is the essence of Ian Underwood's sound. Well, his just being there because of Zappa making that choice to put him there in the sound shows once again Zappa's ability to understand the prominence and need of a saxophone in R&B and doo-wop, which were both huge influences on him as a composer and performer. Zappa's use of the saxophone in jazz fusion and jazz rock. Jazz fusion is a genre that emerged in the 60s alongside Zappa's first albums. This genre was attained by mixing R&B with computer uh, electronic effects and ampl amplifications alongside jazz's complex time signatures, chord progressions, uh, which are all compositional techniques Zappa employs uh, at this time uh, and throughout his career. Jazz rock became almost synonymous with jazz fusion as many rock groups such as Cream, Blood, Sweat and Tears, and the Free Spirits, uh, they all included jazz references in their music. But around the time of Zappa's uh, eighth album, Hot Rats, uh, which is an I iconic jazz fusion post-bop album by uh, a Zappa, uh, right before that, uh, Miles Davis had just dropped the album Miles in the Sky um, with uh, the song uh, Stuff on it. Um, and the, his horn playing personnel included uh, himself, of course, and Wayne Shorter on tenor sax. Um, so the sound of the saxophone was clearly um, very important to uh, keeping that certain sound for jazz fusion if Miles Davis was also at the same time doing that same type of stuff. Uh, at the same time, uh, avant-garde and free jazz are starting to be explored by John Coltrane and still by Ornette Coleman. Uh, who were both blues and bop artists before, during, and after the 60s. Um, Peaches and Regalia from the album Hot Rats um, has a very jazz fusion uh, post-bop uh, solo by Ian Underwood at uh, 145 that is very that is very collected. <laughs> So, um, Zappa saw the saxophone as, as a great use for keeping that jazz fusion and jazz rock sound in, uh, in his music, especially in Peaches and Regalia, which went on to go on into the real book, uh, the fake real books, keeping that jazz fusion and jazz rock sound in, uh, in his music, especially in Peaches and Regalia, which went on to go on into the real book, uh, the fake real books. His biggest jazz fusion album was The Grand Wazoo, uh, just through and through completely jazz fusion. On The Grand, on the Grand Wazoo, uh, he, he hires on an entire horn section, uh, including Mike Atchell, Joanna Caldwell, who I think got fired due to drugs, Earl Dumbler, Fred Jackson, and Joel Peskin, and Johnny Rotella were all hired on for uh, cr the creation of uh, this Grand Wazoo uh, big band style. Yeah, so he, he definitely utilized the saxophones as a sort of textural consideration, uh, timbral consideration rather, uh, for supporting the lead melody line, which is just similar compositional style to what Miles Davis does here in his uh, in his track stuff on Miles in the Sky. trumpet and saxophone playing simultaneously there. Uh, 67 interview with Frank Kofsky. Kofsky says, one thing I've noticed about the Mothers is that they're very definitely an improvisational band. They play solos and they seem very heavily jazz influenced, especially your saxophonist, Bunk Gardner. Zappa says, it's amazing to note that we have had to force him to play that culture-esque vein 
when we had first had him in the band, uh, he was playing straight out of 1955. Howard Ramsey's Light Love All Stars. Koski says, Oh, really? Well, now it sounds to me like vintage 1962 John Coltrane, especially his work on the soprano. And also, I hear some of the new music on the tenor and alto. You listen to that then, I take it, besides Cecil Taylor. You listen to Coltrane too? Zappa says, Well, I don't own, it, own any Coltrane except that he's one artist on the anthology album that Tom Wilson produced in 1950. The one that Cecil Taylor and Sun Ra, it's called Jazz in Transition. It's a classic. This goes on to show that the jazz fusion sound had a place in nearly every single one of Zappa's albums, and in order to achieve that, he had kept a saxophone woman player with R&B, blues, doo-wop, pre-rock, and bop experience in almost every album that called for that specific time. The 1979 release of Joe's Garage uh, included a full sax section, um, tenor, berry, and bass saxophones uh, from an interview with, uh, with Gold Free Press, uh, Gold Coast Free Press. Um, there's a quote saying, Beyond the words, the messages, and the morals, Joe's Garage is a comprehensive catalog of rock styles that is not only historical in scope, but illustrates the influence of Zappa's whole recorded repertoire on progressive rock and jazz rock fusion. After the Them or Us or Thingfish albums in 84, both which saw uh, the use of multi-instrumentalist and saxophonist Napoleon Murphy Brock, after those we see him hire on Bobby Martin uh, in the uh, 1986 album Jazz From Hell, uh, which was a highly jazz fusion, computer music influence album that saw the use of Bobby Martin's saxophone on the track, on the track Jazz From Hell. Uh, in a 1987 interview, saw the explanation of the track Jazz From Hell, um, that the quote is, Jazz From Hell is from within the last four months. It started off with a patch that was built that contained a center, tenor sax, some samples of this little string section chords, odds and ends. The basic sound of the patch was tenor sax, but every time you'd hit a note to get the tenor sax, you'd have something else added to it. In one octave, it might be a recent solo violin, in another octave, it might be a gut string guitar. It was just a mix and match patch. That started off with me just laying down a stylized melody line with the tenor sax, and the rest was added as accompaniment. Like all the keyboard parts, the Fender Rhodes part in there is just me grabbing my favorite mystery chord at random and plopping it in. Even though the intervals are a little peculiar, in some ways, it's got the feeling like someone could have been comping that twisted solo that's there." End quote. Zappa's inclusion of saxophone sound uh, resonates with his progressive rock sound, utilizing the saxophone to bridge this gap between progressive rock tracks into the jazz fusion, jazz rock genre. Frank Zappa was coming out right when the progressive rock, psychedelic rock part of uh, music genres in the 1960s, uh, and his use of the saxophone within those genres as they came out, as he created them, uh, went hand in hand uh, because of his influences, past stated, of jazz fusion and R&B. The saxophone stayed in, in all of his sounds. And it also was in other groups of the time. Uh, Pink Floyd, Cream, Jerry Rafferty, who plays Baker Street, which has a very, uh, very recognizable uh, saxophone solo. <laughs> Um, that came out in 1978, uh, in, towards the middle of Frank's career. Uh, in the 68 release of We're Only In It For The Money, a well-known psychedelic rock album, we see the use of uh, the saxophone uh, as played by Bunk Gardner, Ian Underwood, and Motorhead Sherwood. Like uh, Who Needs The Peace Corps from We're Only, only In It For The Money, uh, you hear uh, almost from the very beginning, uh, oh, at, at one minute in, in the track, where Zappa utilizes uh, this section. In conclusion, throughout Zappa's entire career from his first album to his last, the presence of the saxophone in his music was a key vehicle for the sounds influenced upon him before and after the mothers. The influence of genres before him are R&B, blues, doo-wop, and jazz, as well as genres that arose during his career, progressive rock, psychedelic rock, jazz fusion, and jazz rock, each played an important role in his composing and arrangements involving the saxophone. 
Therefore, the sound of the saxophone can be argued to be a staple of the sound of Frank Zappa, the sound of progressive rock.